Hiya, my name is Pete. Welcome to the channel. This episode, we continue on heading towards Enthorpe Station. We pick it up as we approach Warrendale Viaduct, and then we're going into Enthorpe Station. This has been filmed in a couple of parts, so it might be slightly different. I do apologise about that. I hope you enjoy the episode. Please hit like, share, subscribe. Drop your comments on the video if you have any memories of this line or the viaduct. If you have any photos of that viaduct, please share them with me. I have got an email on the wet on the uh, YouTube website. Uh, in the meantime, please enjoy the video. Right, so I've made it across. That clump of trees is where our cutting has been filled in. And then it comes more or less straight onto an embankment of where I am now. Now I am about 30 or 40 feet above that field there so I suspect this farmer has done the reverse thing taking this cutting taking this embankment away and pushed it in that cutting with a lot of other rubble telegraph poles still following the route of the railway and this is what it looks like on top of that embankment now as flat or as potentially as flat as the land that they've chosen, there's still a lot of cuttings and a lot of embankments on the way to Market Waiting. We've still got to get through our deepest cutting. This is quite a narrow track up here. It looks like it's mainly animal tracks. You can probably hear all this pulling on me. This is why I wear my ratty clothing, sorry about that jerking around. I'm going to have to put the camera away. We're going to continue down this embankment. It's continuing to get higher. Probably about 50 or 60 feet now down to that field. And it's the same at the other side. I'm showing you the ground. We've got the clinker still bits of unburnt coal all down there pointing to this being a railway embankment we're going to continue on you can see how overgrown that is hopefully we can get through there because there was something quite incredible down there and uh, we'll see you down there it's now tough going on this embankment uh, my brother remembers using this as a cycle path probably about 30 years ago that would go down to our feature down there but I want to show you how high this embankment is I know that cameras don't pick up perspective that well but I won't fancy going down there I mean how high would you say that is Steve 80 feet oh, plus, yeah, easy. 80 or 90 feet down there we're gonna continue on clinker everywhere which is always nice to see because there's your supporting evidence there was a piece of metal in the ground there, but we're not convinced it's from the railway era. Um, we're just going to continue on. No fence post up here, possibly down at the lower level. And uh, all right, we're fast approaching where we need to be. We're heading towards the station. Now I'm at the end of this embankment, and it was rapid. The Yorkshire walls are full of peaks and troughs, and you can see down there. This is where our highest point of the embankment was and already we're back on flat land now I'm going to head over to where our brother is down there we're already heading into a cutting but there's no relics here so we'll move on that's where we've come from from our embank embankment not a very clear path it has opened up a little bit we are in a shallow cutting 8 to 10 feet we'll continue on now what you can see behind me, there, is a small occupation road, meaning a farmer's access. That direction is where we've just come from. Now if we'd been here 25 years ago, we'd have seen one heck of a structure crossing this. I'm 
quickly flipping the camera around this is where we've walked we've not been able to walk up there because it's been so overgrown but that there 60 70 feet narrow road but over there 60 70 feet now what used to be here covering a little farmer's access occupation road you can see my brother there so you can see how the scale on things was a big five arch viaduct gone demolished I believe it was demolished in the early 2000s possibly late 90s I'm not certain the reason it was demolished is because nobody wanted to adopt it or take responsibility for it people used to cross it it was a public footpath at the time not necessarily official but it was used but also scouts clubs used to come here and abseil down it and they do and the council deemed it deemed it an unsafe structure so they demolished it now I've been trying my best to get a photograph of this I've not got any I couldn't find any anywhere and I've again I've been searching for months I spend a lot of time researching these lines it's gone no evidence of it but what I have found is some plans on what this used to look like so I will put those up and I'll show you what that viaduct looked like I'm going to try and get up there because we can walk a little bit further along there and then it crosses into a field where it's been infill as a cut-in and then we're going to the real jewel of this part of the railway line Enthorpe station looking around where the viaduct was I know it was a red brick viaduct and we do have some evidence covered in moss red bricks but what we've also found with my brother is what we think is where one of the supports for the viaduct was they've left so I'll show you that this is the side that goes towards Enthorpe station and down here lots of bits of red brick but what we have up there is some brick in situ so I'm wondering if that is one of the supports for the viaduct legs let's go up there now just before I get to the top that's my stuff you can see here the edge of the viaduct and what we're looking at here now is my brother's pointed out that this bit here has been taken back but if we go down there I'm really hoping you can see that on camera that this has still got the curve of the viaduct on there I'm moving a bit closer and I'm really hoping that you can detect that not a lot left but I'll take it right let's get on with the line like I say remember this viaduct because we'll be coming back to this later on right I'm on top of where the viaduct was this edge here all gone enough for two tracks this stage this uh, embankment nice and high that bit is fenced off we can't access that but what we'll do is we'll just walk down the side there get as far as we can but this is almost it that row of trees at, right at the back there is almost Enthorpe station so I don't know how much further we can get now Fuck me. <laughs> yeah that made me jump so this is our embankment our viaduct is there this is all fenced off so we can't access that but that's the trap bed just in here and then we go that way and we are pretty much at Enthorpe station I don't think that's accessible it is farmland I know it's been filled in so the next time you catch up with us will be at Enthorpe station I have actually come down a little bit further our viaduct there this is our track bed at that side it's been an embankment and then at this side there's been a slight cutting back there but now we've got a slight embankment big embankment on the other side and where them trees are it goes into a cutting heading towards Enthorpe station but 
what I have done is I've tried to walk down this a little bit further and this is all cutting. It all looks in really good condition, but we can't access it. So we're calling it a day at this point and we're going to go down to Wenthorpe Station. We have got spe special permission to go on that land, so thank you to the owners for inviting us along. And that's where we'll catch up with you. It's a bit windy, sorry about that. You can see this cutting goes round and then it's filled in and then there's a farmer's field and then it's the station and that's where we'll pick this line up. We've made it through from there. Our railway line is there. It was a cutting that has been filled in and we have got special permission from the owners of Enthorpe Station to access this land. It is private property, don't come here without seeking permission. We have got permission to be here and we are now in what is Enthorpe Cutting. It's not the deepest section because this is the approach to the station as we're heading towards Market Wheaton. I'll turn the camera around and I'll show you what I can see and I'll talk you through what was what. That is where we've come from. This has all been backfilled. Sorry about the wind, there's not a lot I can do about that. But as you can see, we are in a cutting. If I take you up to the edge there, this looks like we've got original railway fencing at the top of that embankment at that side. And we can see a cutting there. This is the track bed here. But at this point it was splitting off because there are some coal stores here, or there was. It is currently holiday homes around here and if you notice they are named after stations along the railway line. These are built out of old railway carriages or uh, goods carts. So you can definitely stay here. It's called the Wagons. You should look that up. So if you fancy stopping in one of these, which they do look rather nice, I would thoroughly recommend you do because this area is beautiful. Now, our coal sidings and goods sidings went up this way. And we've got the remains of a building there. That is more than likely what was once potentially tools, tool storage. Now we have got this platform here, you can see that going up there. It is not the original coping, the landowners have put a concrete coping on to protect what remains of the platform thankfully. Some people do do these with these properties. And again we've got that building there, again made from a railway goods carriage and that one's called Middleton because there were four intermediate stations on the way to Market Wheaton. Now what we have here is a rare relic. That was a lamp post where you put your foot on there so that you could step up and light the gas or the tilly lamp, whatever they used to use before electricity. That side platform is gone. It does reappear further up there. This side is still in situation. Across there, there used to be a temporary, well, a waiting room, possibly made of wood, I'm not certain. And then you can see this one here, you can see the shape of that another one railway carriage it does look I mean they look lovely so our coal sidings came up to about here and they did stop before they got the station as far as the station which was approximately where this building is it was demolished, uh, the, the landowners now, the people that live in the, the, the properties that are here told me that this place was just abandoned, everybody moved out, so much so that even a couple of the local farmers moved away as well. I'll just show you this platform here, we can see that they've tried to preserve this one by putting an edge on it thankfully, 
and we have got this huge lump of wood down here with the iron work in it now that could be one long sleeper for some points uncertain if you do know please drop me a comment we have got some photographs of this station so we will be able to match them up and here we've got the remains of where the sign used to stand now that I don't know where the other one was around there or possibly there but on top of this used to set the sign saying Enthorpe up there we've got the station cottages which we will get there shortly over that side we've got another lamp post there are there is another one down there as well but we can see the platform edge and I'm going to get down there and I'm going to get a close-up that for you and we'll have a look underneath the platform that we're walking on there we can see it the edge of that has been preserved quite well because thankfully the top has been preserved this one not so much apparently this one was in a bad state and then after the station this is the site of the signal box where this building is Now the reason that got done is because there were plans to reinstate this signal box it hasn't come to fruition as yet but the landowners wanted to make sure that this still remained as a building and the way they did that was to use the footings and just build it up a little bit just to make sure that it doesn't get lost once we've been to the station we go through there that is a railway bridge we will cover that in the next episode because that is where we will take off next we'll go up to the railway cottages <laughs> So our signal box there this is where the crossing was quite literally down here and then this is our platform and the station roughly is where the Enthorpe carriage is it does look a lovely place so this station opened on the 21st to the 4th in 1890 And a company that opened it was a Scarborough, Bridlington and West Riding Junction Railway. Up there is the workers' cottages, the railway cottages, and this is the original station road. Now at the other side of that road there is what's called Enthorpe Cutting this station didn't really serve any community and it's took its name from Enthorpe House and isolated farms in the area and it provided mostly for freight two facing platforms have we seen the main station was built on the down platform and was built single storey 
In 1911, the catchment area for this station had a population of only 109, and during that year, there was 1,354 tickets sold. Now we've seen the concrete post that supported the sign, and we've seen what's left of the platforms as well. Now the three railway cottages which are here have been knocked through into one property and it is a magnificent structure. Now we've got the original steps up here to the cottages. I'm going to take you up those because there are some air vents on this building that are exactly the same as the ones at Setterington. I don't want to show you into the private property, it is a private residence, but we have got permission and I think it's important that we catch small details. As you can see there, they're slightly different but they are almost the same as what they have at Setrington. What's so special about those? Well, they represent wagon wheels. And we've got another set down there. Absolutely beautiful. And I will now show you the view from these buildings. And then we'll go back down what were the original workers' steps, because it's quite privileged to do this. All them men the railway men that went up them steps. Now the station being down there, coming from Driffield this way to Market Wheaton, we start entering a cutting. And what we'll do is we'll get up to the station gate and there is a bridge at the end here which I did mention but we will cover that in the next episode so make sure you subscribe to the channel for that next one we have got a bit of a breeze going on but what I wanted to show you was is the driveway up to the house because we have got another lamp post here that one's been quite buried down we've got that lamp post there and you can see through the trees the top of the railway bridge but the reason we're going up here is to show you the original station gates I apologize about the wind here now so we've still got the actual gate holder on the top there and then at the side we've got the other post here concrete posts in there come down here we've got our little uh, latch area the wind is getting strong it's the end of the day for filming for us we've got the bridge and then over there we have a cutting and we will go into that in the next episode. So that covers us from Middleton on the Worlds right down to Wenthorpe Station. Some interesting finds along the way. Next 
we're going to be going to Enthorpe Cutting all the way down into Market Wheaton to see what's left of that railway station. I'd like to thank the landowners for letting us gain access to this property and to be able to showcase it and show it what it is and what's left to be able to confirm things around that signal box. If you want to see what's going on in that next episode we're going to discuss that bridge that's just over there. We've got the cutting coming up and we've got Middleton Railway Station, uh, Market Wheaton Railway Station. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.